AI is only the beginning of what I call hyper automation. And that's the holy grail. An AI that creates an action, what enables this is exactly the same. Data, AI, and automation connected together. That's the key for any business today to optimize. Hello, and welcome to the Go to Market with AI podcast, a podcast about AI products, AI founders, and GTM leaders using AI in their work. In today's episode, I speak with Kobe Stock, founder and CEO of Forward.ai, an AI platform helping GTM teams add AI functionality across their technology stack. Kobe and I talk about his path of serial entrepreneurship, his experience at WalkMe as a foundation for wanting to build forward, ways he's seeing innovative GTM teams leverage AI technology, what GTM teams get wrong about AI, and the skill set of future GTM leaders that will be most valued in the age of AI. Let's get started. Kobe, hello and welcome. Good morning or good afternoon, good evening. How many hours ahead of me are you? I'm in New York. I am seven hours ahead of you, so it's okay. a good afternoon. It's like good afternoon, nice, nice end of day, like beginning of day podcast for me, end of day podcast for Kobe. True. True. Amazing. Amazing. Well, I know I'm really excited to talk about Forward. I know that that's how we originally got connected uh, and Forward is an AI platform and you'll tell us a whole bunch about all of that. But before we get into Forward, I'd love to be able to start with like, how did you find yourself in founding and leading and being the CEO of an AI company, especially right now? And what was your journey into it? Because as I understand it from talking to you earlier, you were maybe around this region before the hype train started and you were in the right place versus jumping in a little bit late to the party. So maybe let's start with wherever makes sense to you of what was your journey? How did you get to Forward itself? Yeah. Um, first of all, I'm super excited uh, to be a corner. So thanks very much. And second, I'm a geek. I'm coding since I'm six. And uh, actually, I knew that I will do software like from, you know, super early age. Uh, what were you coding at six? Games mostly. Games. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. This was, was the beginning too. of the PC era, right? So we, we, like my parents couldn't afford buying games and we... You had like books of teaching you how to code some games in basic. It was back then, but uh, yeah, doing that, I was er early on the internet, obviously, and really started my career as a developer. I worked for a, a big company called SAP and really, you know, kind of what I did, I basically helped to build kind of the, the biggest in-memory database, SAP HANA, and then kind of rolled after SAP. I was always like in my mind, I want to build something myself. Uh, and I actually left SAP to found my first company. Uh, it was more than 12 years ago. And then from there, it was a very natural. Path. Wait, what was the first, what was the first company? The first company was a company that uh, teaches you how to play the guitar actually. So I'm a, also a oh, musician cool. in my yeah. history. So I basically built um, an algorithm that understands what you play, which chords, which melodics and provides you feedback. So you can be a better guitarist. And it was all about playing rock music. So we had like, okay. you know, Green Day and Led Zeppelin and Foo Fighters yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. So it's like, it was like an iTunes, but instead of buying the songs, you would buy how to play them. Like, so, like runs on your phone or what was the hardware? What was the actual? Phone, tablet. My, microphone listens, understands, and gives you feedback on, on your play sound. Exactly. Super cool. Exactly. And by the way, this was my first touch in early, early AI, right? Yeah. How, can you so how can you solve that kind of interface that you analyze someone's feedback so fast and you try to kind of say what they've played, yeah. right? So, so that's the first kind of time where I kind of touched that. And after that, kind of, I kind of shifted between core engineering to product and to business and to go to market and really kind of discovered what's around me because of that. Then after this company, it was a six years journey. After that, I basically switched to product and took like a few product roles at a few uh, startups. And then I started my second company, which actually we developed a cool product for mobile companies that helps them to understand when you're happy. And this okay. was the second time that I touched uh, machine learning because if you think about it, when you're a bank with a mobile app or an e-commerce app or even Waze, like the, the, you know, the GPS application. And you want to ask your users something, if it's to rate the app or to get them feedback on your next release, you want to catch them at the right moment when they are most likely to kind of respond to your feedback. So today, like previously, uh, folks are 
hard coding those points in time, but actually everyone is different. So we tried to basically understand what's going on on your device, on your graphic card, accelerometer, gyroscope. We took all of those signals, more than 300 signals, and computed the happy moment. So that was my second touch in AI. Is that just like if I'm if I'm button mashing, I'm I'm probably pissed off. Is I mean that's incredibly reductive, but but is that sort of like the vein? You're pissed off or playing like hardcore game. So if yeah. you're touching the button, oh and yeah, you're, con and, contextual. And yeah, your yeah, yeah. graphic that might card, be a lot of engagement. Okay, that makes exactly. sense. Exactly. Yeah. It's 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 all related to a context, right? So if you're pushing strongly on the device and the graphic card is working hard, you're not pissed off. You're probably mm, interesting. Okay. But if your graphic card stopped and you're pushing games, yeah, 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 probably something wrong, right? Yeah. And that's the magic of machine learning and AI, where it can support so many scenarios that when you try to code them manually, you just can't support them. Yeah, it's impossible. Yeah, for sure. It's impossible for someone to do that. So, so actually, interesting story about this company. I sold it to another company based here in Israel called WalkMe. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. heard about it. I do. And, uh, I know Walk Me from from deep Salesforce backgrounds. A lot of what Happily is doing is sort of inspired by a lot of that Salesforce ecosystem side. And and Walk Me is one that immediately sort of came to mind. And I think when we originally got connected, I was like, oh, I know Walk Me. This is interesting. Yeah. So Walk Me, I joined Walk Me. We were around 300 employees, maybe less. When I left, we were above 1,000 and we're a public company. So I kind of viewed the the business growing. And actually I was sitting in the, in the main junction of the company. I was the SVP of product. So really everything that goes between customers to engineering, I was there. So really amazing uh, journey, tons of AI initiatives uh, back then. So also touching AI a lot. I always kind of, for me, I try to be not too deep, but to really get engineering and really to be in the myth of what's going on. And I left WalkMe around two and a half years ago to solve a problem that I solved internally at WalkMe. And I said, why not going and, you know, productize it? And that's forward my third startup and hopefully last. I mean, that's what I, at least <laughs> You're like, I tell my wife. The end of my journey that's what I tell my wife. But um, okay, okay. <laughs> but that's the, that's the journey. Until here. So tell, tell me about Forward. What, what's, what's the problem? Where does it sit? What are you guys up to? And, and, and then we can talk a little bit as a sort of like why and where that fits in. And I think what's interesting is before we jump into that is I think a lot of folks, and it's been really interesting doing this show because I think that there's a lot of people who are very early to the AI boom and, and getting sort of drawn in by the gold rush. And then there's folks who are sort of like, I've been in the mountains, trilling and mining and uh, sure. everybody's showing up. And I think you're, you're much more in that ladder camp with a lot of this, given sort of the background in the space prior. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Maybe I'll, I will go one step back. So I'm a product person, right? And for me, product is always around the data that you can really put on your plate to understand what's going on, right? And I'm a big fan of product analytics. I've used all the products until today. And the reason that I started forward is that in WalkMe, we had a problem that we wanted to try and predict churn. And the way we wanted to do so is by utilizing product usage. And we said, you know what? Let's take all of the product usage, all the features that we release. Let's measure usage of different users and accounts. And let's try to see if we can correlate usage to churn. So we invented the new metric. We called it adoption score. And we treated like a credit score in the US. Similarly, you know, zero to 800. So people can really easily understand it. So think about a customer success person trying to understand the health of their customers. They've gone and through many dashboards, Salesforce, Tableau, some product data, asking questions on Slack, it's not scalable. So what we want to do, we want to compress all of the signals and put like a traffic light in Salesforce. By the way, using WalkMe, right? So we had the data, then I built like a big team and we needed to buy a data warehouse. We needed to set up an ETL. We needed data operations people. We needed data yeah, tons, scientists. Tons of work to get this whole thing configured. Tons of work. Listen, yeah. it took us seven months of work. I mean, that's not, that's not even that bad. <laughs> with a 20 
people. Okay, okay. so there's, there's a, lot, a lot of people making that happen on, on a, a long time. A lot of time. work, right? To yeah. build the model. Then after we built the model, we needed more people to integrate the model back into Salesforce so the CS folks can really see the data back in Salesforce. And after that, I realized that it's great that we built the first model, but the data is keep on changing. We need to constantly update it. And I stopped there and I said, there must be a better way. How can I productize it so I can reduce the barrier? So I can reduce the number of people who work to do that. I can reduce the cost of the infrastructure. And instead of a year, take it down to a week. And that's exactly what Forward is. Forward is basically... Mm. automating this very complex, heavy process that most chances that internally you can't solve it. And even if you can solve it, you're not focusing on your business. So you don't want to solve it internally. Do, right? do you think, so, okay. So if I'm going to go in and sell forward, do I, what, what do I need in place already? So if, if you're sort of describing, Hey, we went and implemented this thing. We had to set up data warehousing. We had to connect all these systems. Is it, you're going to go and connect everything that already exists. I already have to have a data warehouse that's provisioned. And then you're connecting to that. Or where, where do I have to be on that maturity scale for something like forward to be of value to me? The goal of forward is basically to improve your internal day-to-day business processes. Let's pick a process. Let's pick a I don't know, lead qualification, for example, a very common process. Most companies solve it via a very simple lead scoring that they implement in HubSpot, right? Salesforce, Marketo, whatever, right? And lead scoring up until now, it's basically a set of rules. I call it the mm-hmm. casino model. Why yeah. the casino model? The casino model? Just, the casino model, because you just <laughs> guess. If sure, the title sure. is a VP, sure, sure. if you have more than five content, if they answered an email, yeah. You, you just give them points, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as I told you before, you don't know the context. Yeah. If someone answered an email in an enterprise company, it, it, it should be weighted differently than if someone answered an email in a, in a small company. Right? Sure. This is why it's the casino model, because it's nonsense. It's not the truth. So in order to improve the process, you already have the data in Marketo, right? In Salesforce, whatever. So you connect the data that you already have to forward And you define what you want to optimize. So generally, lead scoring or lead qualification, you want to optimize the number of sales qualified leads that you produce. So you provide forward with this specific goal, how you define a sales qualified lead, and forward will reverse engineer your entire data set, will clean it, and will build an AI model that will show you which factors and values are relevant or impacting your sales qualified leads, and will help you to predict on a daily basis. which leads will become SQL. And the same goes to sales forecasting, the same goes to identifying churn, upsell, cross-sell. So think about all those processes that you have today and you implement them manually. Think about adding AI to these processes and think about what's the optimization that you can drive. So are you guys building, so do I, do I bring my data warehouse or do I bring my amalgamation of business systems and start connecting those? It depends on how you operate. We don't want to move your cheese anywhere. If you are operating as a company and your kind of architecture is you funnel everything through your data warehouse, we will work with your data warehouse. If you don't have this kind of architecture, or maybe you have it in one department and the other department, you don't have it, we will work in the exact architecture and nature and process that you already have. So you can use a data warehouse, you can just use all of the systems. And the cool thing is that if you don't have those systems connected yet, you don't need to. Ford okay. can do this for you. question for you just on being a serial entrepreneur being somebody who's built stuff in sort of the GTM arena and when I think about what forward is when, when I think about what you've just described is it is a b2b SaaS product that is oriented around the insights and data and is made possible because of AI versus like this is an AI product that does AI stuff and it makes me think and wonder if like a lot of people think about and a comparison that we've made with a couple of other folks is sort of like people are looking at AI like oh it has open apis or it runs on the cloud and as this sort of modifier and I'm curious if you sort of look at it the same way where you You, you really think about it as we're building a software product and that product is possible because of the AI that's inside of it versus like we're selling and marketing an AI thing. And, and if that like resonates or, or aligns to your sort of framework of thinking. That's a very good question. We are actually enabling folks to build their own AI products. So we are a company that sells AI, not a software that AI is embedded in because I think that every software today Every software that people do today is using AI and if not today, 
maybe tomorrow we see more and more companies soon certainly soon so so we are a pure AI company that actually our goal is that everyone in the company and especially because we are targeting operations like revenue operations marketing operations CS operations we want them to have a new tool that they don't have now and up until now they needed a lot of technical depth for them to use it they needed a lot of people they needed to complicated infrastructure now they don't need it now yeah. they can use a platform like forward to create their own AI applications yeah, yeah, yeah. to your point you're, you're adding that that AI functionality into and on top of their existing infrastructure and so you, you guys are essentially helping any of these organizations become AI powered true within the context of revops well yeah up until now it's not there I mean will people think about AI they mostly think about chat GPT Or yeah. LLM right it's a prompt that you write something and it gives you feedback like the new model that open AI released recently soma right that creates videos that's amazing right but at some points for some problems you don't need content content is not the answer I, I think to your point like contents the most relatable it's the thing that a lot of people just immediately understand and so I think it's the one that it gets everybody both excited well I think it was I don't even know if it was recent this is like you saw it on a TikTok. And so I'm like, oh, this happened recently. Could have been a while ago. I have no idea. But Neil deGrasse Tyson with Stephen Colbert talking about AI and being like, this has been around for a while. This isn't new. It isn't novel. Like the only thing that's novel is all of a sudden it can write essays and do liberal arts stuff. And now everybody's like, holy shit, this is very scary and intense. And the reality is that's just a permutation of what was already there versus being sort of like this whole new modicum on top of it. Question for you that I'm sure you get from investors and other folks all the time. And if, if I'm going, and I don't mean it to be super hard hitting, But how do you think about sort of like forward as a solution that's connecting to sort of what you have versus what all the platforms are sort of adding and, and doing themselves, right? So you have Salesforce is adding AI, HubSpot's adding AI. H how do you think about not, not just forwards positioning, but sort of like what functionality the platform itself is going to do and then where other solutions that you might be connecting, adding in, sort of adopting in addition to that, where do those fit? Great question. So to my opinion, Salesforce adding AI and HubSpot adding AI It's a must. They will add AI. But to solve your problems, your organizational problems, you need more than a Salesforce or a HubSpot. You need something that will do cross organization, cross application. This is something I think in, especially in the HubSpot ecosystem, is it's, it's nascent, it's growing, it's getting more enterprise-y. But I think a lot of people, especially coming from sort of a Salesforce universe, know this already, is even if you're going to fully utilize and fully deploy any product, any platform, no one software is going to do all of your things. And 100%. so to your point, there's always other stuff in the stack and there always will be. Exactly. And that's only one point, to my opinion. Second point, you have business processes that unique that are unique for you. When Salesforce design a feature or HubSpot, they don't design it so it can support anyone's business process, right? And by the way, Salesforce Einstein is a very good example. Salesforce can predict stuff, right? Almost like forward. But sure. in order to use it, you need to change your internal processes so they fit what they have designed. And you don't want to do that. So this is why an external piece can really connect the different voids into a solution that is customized to you. And if the solution is customized to you, and even more when talking to AI and data, the accuracy and the results that you will get will be much, much better that will fit your needs. Do you think that there's a place for both platform and tool native AI functionality and then sort of like a AI wrapper around all of that as well? And like both of those coexist? Or do you think one is just sort of a better approach and strategy than the other? I think that they are already coexisting. And I think that, you know, companies like Airtable or Miro or ClickUp or even Monday proved us that That even when you have Salesforce, you sometimes don't have all the modules that you need for your own company, like a specific mm -hmm. process within CS, a specific process within customer support. Like you don't have everything. And I think those voids will always be filled by startup companies. Mm -hmm. And exactly the I, I same agree. as, and exactly in the same way, AI companies will do the same. And again, AI companies are different, right? So we'll be able to do that. Forward is not, uh, by the way, a company that's using LLMs or an external models. Why? Because we want you to build your own models mm -hmm. on your own data. You need also to differentiate between the two. I'm certain 
that enterprises moreover in the RevOps kind of area will use more AI for process optimization, let's call it this way. And I want forward to be the simplest way for them to do that. I think that obviously more companies will try to do those things. But another thing, thing to mention about AI, I think that if you don't include AI with automation, you're not doing anything. And I think that AI is only the beginning of what we will see. I call it hyper automation. And that's the, the holy grail, right? An AI that creates an action. Hey, Connor, this customer is not responding. If you will send them an email about X, Y, Z, they will increase their likelihood of buying. Boom, you trigger the action. You send this specific email, you get the result. You, I mean, the entire funnel and process will be boomed. It reminds me that I've read, I'm not sure where, that Sam Meltman said that soon we will have a unicorn of one person or whatever. So what enables this is exactly the same. Is data, AI, and automation connected together? That's the key for any business today to optimize their day-to-day. -day. I think that the companies, you know, like HubSpot and Salesforce, doing a lot by developing the modules, but connecting them differently it's always, you need to look back from your own needs, which are custom, and then just execute that. I just saw, maybe this is coming from this, but I, I went to Lord of the Rings in concert, which I highly recommend. It was amazing. But as, as you're talking about this, what, what sort of like reminded me of this is if you think about kind of like what those big platforms are and they kind of have their armored plates. And the reality is, is that if they were fully armored, there, there would be completely immobile. And so in those gaps, there's always opportunity. And if you are an entrepreneur and you are looking at sort of like, what can you be doing and where can you be adding? And I think th the reason that I love B2B entrepreneurship is it's it's a lot easier to find those. Like you're going to go ask people like, hey, where, where are the gaps that you guys are feeling? And they'll just tell you. Whereas I think in consumer, it's a lot more like you just make stuff and see, see if anyone likes it, which I think yeah. is a lot harder and a little bit more lightning in the bottle. But I think to your point, even all of the platforms, if they add that native functionality, get to a place where they need to be able to have something that supplements those gaps and even sort of wraps around the entirety of what they're doing because ultimately that platform only has eyes on what is in that platform itself. And even as you get fully deployed, you, you always have sort of additional pieces. 100%. And it's always has been this case, right? Back from the 90s, PeopleSoft, Sybil, SAP, you don't have one software to roll everything. You, you, you just can't. Yeah. So, so you talked about the sort of churn prediction and customer scoring components with, with Ford at the top end as an example. What, what else are you seeing customers do? Where, where you've sort of seen anybody that is using the product and you're, whether you're like, whoa, that's an incredible or they're having positive outcomes or whatever sort of resonates to you that, that you've actually seen some of your customers leverage forward or, or maybe even forward plus other stuff in their stack. So actually, we are playing a platform play, right? We don't sell an, an application, we sell a platform. And when we started, we always talked with customers about what they want to build using the platform, right? Because we ourselves don't know exactly what are the limits, how big we can go. And on those discovery calls, we learn all the time what customers want, want to do. And, uh, you know, it was, I think, like a few quarters ago when we had a customers talking about us about territory management. It's a subject that I never thought that can be connected to AI or a predictive model. And we just build it using forward. So now they have a better territory alignment and management using a predictive model that suggests them how to kind of divide their leads on a specific regions that all the AEs within these regions get high quality leads and you don't have one AE that gets all the, all the mm. gold. Are you, are you doing that like on assignment or are you doing that like let, load up all the accounts here? Like how does that, what, what's the input and what's the output for that type of a solution? Yeah, so it varies, but usually we select a specific segment of accounts. It can be a product line, it can be few regions, whatever, and then with the customer, we actually don't build anything, the customer builds. So the customer knows, usually in this place with a very talented RevOps person that kind of had this idea, and I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So he defined exactly the goals. He defined what a qualified account is. He defined what a qualified contact is. And we used actually two models, one for the contacts, one for the accounts. At the top of the funnel, we combined both of them and then we pushed the predictions back into Salesforce. We did an aggregated score of all of them. And then based on that, 
he implemented the routing function in Salesforce that actually routed the contacts and accounts to AEs based on what the model suggests. So mm-hmm. this is like a very good, cool example that, you know, I never thought. How, how technical does your buyer have to be? So if you have somebody, is it the RevOps person that does low code and no code platforms and is, is comfortable in that arena? Is it somebody, maybe you have that plus maybe a data engineer, like what level of, of sophistication does somebody need to be to be able to, to work effectively with, with forward specifically? Yeah. Any RevOps, any RevOps that operates within Salesforce, Mercado, HubSpot can build this. And by the way, average build time takes three hours. The average goal of is three weeks. So really it's a new tool. Sometimes we do training for an hour explaining the concept. And we also get feedback from customers. Hey, I don't understand this, 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 and that. So we constantly change the product so folks will understand it. But, and we also have a, we also have like a no touch a, a funnel to the product where I see people just go in, connect HubSpot and just starting to build. HubSpot is our main integration, by the way. I'm, I see people from the store go in, install it in minutes and build models. And that's really amazing to see and, and it happens. So any rev ops, marketing ops, CS ops can use forward. We, and, and by the way, the more technical side of the business, like the analysts and the scientists also use forward to accelerate the one work. What do you think people are, are missing? Obviously you guys are working with GTM teams that are innovative. They're, they're using some of the AI functionality in, in sort of new and exciting ways. Beyond just forward, where do you think people are either, I mean, everybody's sort of talking about, hey, we're investing in this, we're doing something here, but what do you think people are either not investing in that you think that they should, or where are they sort of misaligning their energy versus what you think the expected upside actually is? I think that, you know, prior to OpenAI, to ChatGPT, most people thought that AI is a buzzword, it's not working, you don't need it, blah, blah, blah. After people saw OpenAI's ChatGPT, management started saying to all employees, hey, listen, use AI right? Because we want to be more efficient, more over with the global economy and what's going on like globally, right? People want to be more efficient. But I think that I see companies wasting time of building internal solutions that don't scale and don't provide what they want to do. Just because they want to play with something, I think it's wrong. I think that often, by the way, 90% of the machine learning projects in enterprises fail. And I think people are wasting too much time about things that are not directly impacting their core business. And this is why I think that people should adopt external solutions to support as as they do for HR, as they do for a database. No one builds their own database for their own purposes. So I think that with AI, especially people are playing with it a lot. A lot of companies come to us after they failed with their internal projects. So I think that people are missing that the idea is not to play with it. The idea is to make an impact on the business and really to try to do it as fast as they can, because this is how you win. So yeah, I see, I see a lot of it. I see tons of people wasting time. I'm not saying that they shouldn't. I'm just saying that as long as it's really focused around the core business, yes, great, right? But if it's orthogonal to the business or a peripheral project, use a different technology, use a different product and just solve it. Yeah. What What do you think is, what makes you excited either about, well, maybe we'll do both sides. So so maybe specifically where forward is going next and, and what sort of gets you excited about what that roadmap looks like. And then maybe a little more macro than that of sort of how you see some of AI's impact on on GTM software and and how you sort of see things changing. So with regards to forward, I think what excites me is that everything is new. We're always doing like new stuff that we don't know if they will work. It's being super creative all day long. That's amazing for me. I love to build, I love to create, that's awesome. So with forward, as I told you before, I believe that the key is hyper-automation. And we are in the center of helping employees and helping companies essentially to hyper automate their own business processes, right? So if I can achieve the same business goals with a half of the team size, 
mm-hmm. or if I can expand my business outcome by 10 times instead of two times in the same workforce, that's amazing. And the way to achieve it is using AI. This is, this is already agreed. Mm-hmm. Now, the question is how you would implement this AI. And that's what excites me about Ford because Ford helps teams to implement AI and to embed it into business processes quickly and to see the results. Is speed like, so you talked a little bit, do you think just speed's the most important thing because the faster you start getting those, those returns, the faster they compound? Or is it just that like, if when you quickly seems to come up repeatedly for you and where do you think that the speed is the most important sort of metric that you're looking at? When I'm saying speed is when you're building AI and AI models, you won't be successful, successful in your first model, maybe in your second model or your third model, right? In order to get to your second or your third model, you need to fail fast in your first model. If you will do an internal project within your company with, you know, like I try to do, and you will fail after a year, you won't start your second model. So I think mm-hmm. because it's super new and everything that we build is new, you need to be able to execute and see results fast. It doesn't mean need to be a day or an hour. It can be a week. It can be three weeks. It can be a month. But you need to control it. You need to own it. And by having something like Ford that lets you own it and build it, you control it yourself. You don't have like a big team that kind of, you know, impacts you, right? You control it. And I think that that's the key. The key is that we enable folks to own it completely end-to-end so they can fail fast on their on the first model and see the results and see the improvement on their second model, on their third model, on their fifth use case. And I think that that's a very important aspect while adopting new technologies that you don't know exactly what you will get. You need to see something. You need to feel something. It's like an MVP of a product, mm-hmm. right? You don't expect it to be perfect, but you expect to feel something, to see something. And uh, until you don't feel it, until you don't see it, you can't really impact anything. So the, the key here is how can I do something on my own without, so with, without a lot of resources? And how can I actually do an impact fast? Because if I can do an impact fast, that will increase the top line by, I don't know, a percent, maybe sure, sure. in, right? But you so might learn something along the way. Exactly. And it's the same for me. And by the way, as I build this platform, as we, as the team, we're changing, we're adding constantly features to the platform. And, and I always say to the team, we need to deliver new features on a weekly basis. That's very, very important in order to see, in order to feel what's working, what's, what's not working. That's very important for a startup or for any project that's starting out. So normally I, I, I end, but I feel like you just answered my ending question, which is for folks that are wanting to get started, they're, they're eager to jump into some of the AI pieces, what, what, how should they just start getting into things? And it sounds like your advice is just do stuff and experiment and learn something. And, and that alone starts compounding value. Exactly. But maybe before that, try to think of the problems that you want to solve. Because again, the context, try to think yeah. about the problems that are really urgent for the business or to yourself personally, right? We're in a business context. So I always try to think about what's important and what's not important. And if I can impact somehow on what's important, right? And if I can impact it, I would definitely go and try and experiment AI. If you're in operations, I would urge you to read more about predictive AI models, obviously about forward, but to be curious and always try to improve your current status. Where do you think the point of diminishing returns is. So if I'm, if I'm in operations and I'm, let me go and see if I can use AI to solve this problem, which is like a big generic statement, right? But if you're thinking, how do I go and jump into this? At what point do you sort of say, eh, maybe I'm, it's, it's kind of the age old, like engineers will spend, you know, 10 hours trying to automate the task that takes one. At what point do you think you sort of run into that? And then maybe it makes sense to not necessarily implement AI into that workflow. And, and maybe you're spending a lot of time trying to solve a problem that isn't necessarily, it's not that it's not solvable, but, but solving it in that way doesn't make a lot of sense. It's a, it, it's a good question. That's how to answer. But my rule of thumb is if you see, if you know that you have enough data to build your predictions on top of it, if you know the business processes in HubSpot or in Mercado in Salesforce, and you know that you have enough history to learn from, I would go and definitely check it out. Usually those are growth companies, startups, I mean, especially like, you know, 
uh, products like forward is not is not, is not the way to go but if you're a growth company if you're scaling if you don't have by the way also if you don't have resources if you're looking to solve a problem but you, but you don't have an analyst or you don't have a, have, have a data scientist but you have the tools and the data and you want to do it yourself and you want to impact yourself go and do that yeah I mean I think to to your point the the superpower that I think a lot of people in the GTM and operations are going to have is the discernment of when and where can AI be leveraged and add value and then knowing when to apply that as a solution versus when you shouldn't do that and I think it's kind of the next extrapolation of is this automatable should we automate this and I think as you get into more levels of seniority and experience and strategy that, that most of it applies to should we even invest the resources in trying to automate this and I think that extends to you Can AI add value to this workflow and the folks that are able to identify where AI is going to add value and where it doesn't make sense starts to become one of the most valuable skill sets in GTM teams. I 100% agree with everything that you just said, Connor. Fabulous. Well, Kobe, thank you so, so much for joining us. I could talk to you all day. I appreciate you sharing your afternoon with us. Hopefully, I'm not leaving you to too big of a backlog of emails, but I look forward to catching <laughs> up with you more soon. Thank you so much for joining us. And for anyone listening, go check out forward.ai it is forward with no a so f o r w r d dot a i and kobe and his team would love to show you how it works thanks for the opportunity to to speak on her super excited always a pleasure speaking with you so thank you amazing i'll catch up with you soon all right bye bye thank you for tuning in to this episode of go to market with ai this episode was produced by ryan gunn jordan michaelitis and sasley dot video until next time this is connor jeffers stay curious Stay innovative and embrace our robot overlords.